Welcome back to Hell Train. You may notice I have a whole lot of other stuff here. I've been playing a little bit in my off time and gotten a whole lot of stuff, but don't let me knowing what I'm doing discourage you from watching. Turned out that I did most things correctly. I did make a couple of oofs when my first run came through, but We'll see how this goes. Ugh, I like both of these archetypes, but I think Slay is a bit stronger. Oh, in Forever Flame. Forever Flame is insane because it means that your uh, units have basically no cost. Only the most expensive units in the game will have any cost at all to play. Oh wow, what an awful starting hand. Throw on some regen. Cry that I... <coughs> cry that I didn't have enough to deal with him. I'm doing my math right. My champion here should kill him. Yep. That's important because when he kills something, he gains 10 attack rather significant amount. Take time to just throw some healing down. I now know how the previews work, so I shouldn't be making a stupid mistakes nearly as often. First floor is a kind of a joke. Huh. Do I want to go for some kind of imp synergy? Sure. I found that uh, one man I give plus three plus three is really good. There's a lot of units who really like getting buffed in this game. Let's kick, pick up an awoken unit. Ooh, I haven't seen this one. Oh, that's interesting. When he's damaged, you gain uh, Ember. But, second verse, same as the first. That unit was OP. <laughs> and giving him the ability to attack twice is even more OP. <laughs> A big issue for a lot of big units in this game is that they can't really spread their damage out well enough. So giving things that scale really hard like that one, multi-attack, can be insane. Oops. I meant to put him in front. Well, that's a crying shame. Because of my ordering, my uh, champion isn't going to get the slay bonus at all. I might not be able, even be able to keep my champion alive. Yeah, you can't have more than six health and he always takes six damage here. Wait a minute. If I go like this, he lives. But I do waste a whole lot of healing. When I've only got two units in... Oh, I guess I had the Imp. Forgot about that. My units are so limited, it's kind of important to keep them alive. He's already showing off why he's so OP. <laughs> up some more imps. Sometimes I kind of wish you could just set it so you are only one clan. Which, by the way, in case you don't, you haven't been following this game, 
basically I have these two clans. The hell, this one, this run I'm using Hellhorned and Awoken. Hellhorned are like aggressive traditional demons and they have armor effects and some weird focus on moving up and down floors, but regardless. And the Awoken are the, are the planty Healy Gate dudes. I have access to two others. But whenever I'm playing with Hellhorned, I really feel like I want to I want to only play with Hellhorns. They have a lot of cards that synergize with themselves. I'm going this way because I don't really want to oh, quick. Quick can be pretty good on the right characters because it means that uh It means you attack before the enemy gets a chance to, so if you put it on something really strong, you can usually kill somebody. Ah, this guy. I've seen this event before. Basically, you give him a spell or a creature, and after you do the next boss fight, he comes back and gives you a buffed version. I'll give him Sting, because I really didn't want to take Sting in the first place. I'll buff my Molten Imp, so that he's actually a unit. I could spend a little bit more gold but, uh, so I could buff the other one, but I'd rather just save it. There's uh, certain shops that give uh, artifacts, these passives up here, and they burn a whole lot of money. Ah. So it turns out the bosses in this game have different uh, specs, basically, where they'll use different uh, one of three different or more maybe strategies every time uh, cycling through when you fight them. This one is the one. Uh, this one is the Daedalus aspect I have found the hardest to deal with, where he just makes everything when it dies deal one damage. Now it's a real shame. That I can't just wipe these guys with the Molten Imp, because they hit really hard. But if I use put the Molten Imp here, I won't have space. Thankfully I have plenty of uh, Ember, so I can just throw my buffs down on him. What I can do is throw that Molten Imp down here and get some chip damage on the boss. There's actually an achievement, I believe, for killing the boss bosses while they're still in the air. I've never gotten one, but you never know. But yeah, even even if I just burn one with a spell, it makes my little friend here take damage. Now, no matter who I put on the front, they're going to die because how these things work is they blow up before you have a chance to react, unless you have a fast unit. But these train conductors, I believe they're called, are kind of useless 90% of the time. I don't want to waste an attack on that. I believe uh, Daedalus moves in a set pattern where he goes uh, just up and down. So I'm going to throw my Fledgling imp, imp up here to give this guy some more attack. Rage is just uh, gain double your attack in range. In rage. Or other way around, gain double your rage in attack. pop down all that, throw a meat shield up here, I'm not sure how all these guys are dying, but the recap said that they would all die, no, the last one survives, that's what I thought, but you never know, sometimes things apply and you don't think about them.
I don't know if I misplayed there. I don't think so, though. Nope, wasn't able to kill him before he dropped down. I do kill him before this guy even dies. So that's how strong I run. Ah, uh, yeah. Here's that thing that gives gives my units quick. I think actually this run that might be very good. Spreading spores is kind of a weird card. It fills your deck slowly with uh, spreading spores, but. It's not a bad card to use on on heal lovers. And this seems like an interesting card. It basically doubles your spikes. But I've never gotten him while using spikes. Speaking of spikes, this guy is this guy, but he gains spikes when you heal him instead of attack and defense. That's interesting. I think it's just another one of these. They're so good. Actually, maybe not. Let's take a drained brute. If I get one of these, I can put an imp on the floor that I put my two guys on. Yeah, I don't really have any. I don't really have any use for bonus mana. I'm just casting one mana spells. Or Ember, whatever. Ah, uh, this is a big, a big question. Basically, I need to choose whether or not I want a duplicate of that super powerful uh, heal, lo heal loving guy I got, or do I want a random artifact? But I can also get a Hellhorn unit. And the more I get of those, the more likely I am to get that, the huge payoff guy for imps. Because there's, there's one unit who has, like, a ridiculous amount of attack. Hmm. I'm going to take a Horned Warrior. If he doesn't die, he's actually pretty good, because he hits just so hard. Especially when I can give him, uh, quick. Ah, these both suck. Basically, if somebody gets that high, high on my, uh, train, I'm usually done for, but I'll grab it. Ooh, These are not the options I wanted. This basically means that if he takes hit, if he takes damage, he get he, he hits harder, and if he hits and kills something, he gains health, functionally, as well as giving him uh, a decent amount of stats. I think I'm just gonna take Reaper too, because that way, if he pops off and gets a whole lot of attack, he gets it even faster. A random matter of fact is usually pretty good, but this is probably the most threatening seal uh, trial in the game. Every unit effectively gets double the their normal attack, and I can't deal with that right now. this guy up here. Got that proc. So now he has a lot of attack. You have got to put this on him. Because that gives him the chance to try and kill stuff before it becomes a threat. Now I basically have to choose, do I want to defend my pyre, or do I want to deal damage? I get bonus points if I do this, but I don't care that much. Oh wait, I can't even kill him. Might as well. Oh, 
Oh, he doesn't run away, it looks like. Let's throw this guy here. Now he'll die. And this is useless, so... These guys are usually pretty hard to kill, too. Oh, look at those attack values because of this guy. Oops. But that reduces the damage by a lot. I'd really like to have more healing so that I can get this guy to tank more hits, but... Not sure how viable that actually is. Might be a straight up misplay to try and uh, give him the buff instead of a healing. Uh, fuck, <laughs> doesn't matter. Well, this is probably pretty good when I'm running two imps. And I was just talking about how much I needed, uh, healing. It takes an entire turn's worth of, uh, ember, but... It does a lot. Uh... Heaven's Aid. So I can let them ha let him have this for longer to presumably make it even better. I'll let him hold on to it. I'm not doing anything with it right now. It'll be really funny if it if it turns out that uh, by doing that I get screwed, and he comes back later and punishes me. Ah, uh, here's the thing. Uh, this is really good, especially if I'm going directly into one of these guys. Oh. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that gives armor right now, but... That effect that gives every creature a mini version of what my champion has. And I'll take that because all the imps have summon effects. Oh, this guy. This guy's a run ender. For the first, uh, this is the boss, for the first eight attacks, he can't be targeted by attacks. It is uh, ridiculous how much you have to do to try and survive through this. It doesn't help that he just also hits pretty hard. These guys, when they die, give other units power, so they're really annoying. But I'll just do that, and none of them will get a chance to attack. And now it is that, but more of them. There's not too much point to setting it up like that, but... I figured I'd rather get all of the units out of my deck so that I can start drawing into the spells. Put this guy up here. The main use of killing these guys is so that they don't eat and attacks for when I'm trying to kill other things later. Like you may have saw, by killing one, I actually made the damage that this guy takes a lot more. But I also now kill the entire row, so, n so these guys don't have to deal with anything. Let's 
see. You can now kill both of these guys before they get a chance to do anything. He hits so hard that he'll actually kill one of these guys before they get a chance to attack, which saves me a lot of health. Yeah, I actually gained health there. Point for point, that's way more efficient than using these, even though it gives me less procs of his buff, and I'm about to fight the boss. But the HP he's getting in return is just so worth it. Well, this is kind of dead now, but... That might have been wrong. But according to the recap, I'm going to survive this guy's ridiculous eight attacks for, eight attacks for free. You see this? That is a ton of damage. <laughs> That doesn't feel fair. <laughs> that seems pretty good, but I don't think it's actually very good. I'll just take another imp so that I have more imps. And hell, I'll take another awake so I have more healing. And it's this dude again. Upgrade for not giving, not taking it back then, is that it costs zero, but it already costed zero. Ah, that's ridiculous. But now that I know what that event does, I've only done it with spells before. There's something I want uh, to duplicate really badly. I could get another copy of this guy. That might be worth it. I think it is worth it. Well, this is where my uh, run ended last time. And I believe this is actually the same variant, which I have not seen since I uh, did that first run. We'll see when we see her health. Nope, 700. Maybe it, just, it was just that first time the enemy had a ridiculous amount of health. I've never seen her with 1,300 health since that first fight. Oh look, there's Sting. Because of this, uh, my little molting imp actually does 10 damage. Which is a pretty decent amount. Nice, got that slay proc. These little statues are really annoying for me, so I'm glad to have killed one on the first turn. If I play this guy, I actually gain a ridiculous amount of mana, so... Now I can afford to do this. This guy gains a ton of health, but he still dies! He gains, uh, he has an effect where he gains 10 armor every single time you use the spell. And it's usually really annoying, but I think I just outpace him now. Well, that was poorly calculated. I just threw away two units. Oh, I hope the bottom can, uh, 
keep it together. So the fledgling imp here. He's not gonna die this turn, so I'm not too worried about him. Ah. Oh, this guy has sweep. That's not fair. Enemies who can uh, effectively remove your units. No matter what you do to defend them, are very annoying. Sweep and, uh, I'm forgetting its name. Spikes. They're called spikes. They're usually called thorns. Are both very dangerous because they let let the enemy get rid of uh, threats that usually you would they would have no way of getting to. Kind of forces you to invest health in your squishy backliners. I really want to sacrifice an amp, and I think this one is the less useful, but it feels bad to lose the nine damage. Well, that gets one, uh, that gets most of it back. That feels bad. I didn't do quite enough damage to have uh, finished off the first guy. So now this guy does like almost 100 damage per. Again, I'm not even going to lose my front guy. <laughs> ah, this is ridiculous. The more things change, the more they stay the same. I've gone through an entire lifetime without you guys. And I come back using the same strategy of just heal the fuck out of these guys. But it's like Todd Howard always says. It just works. Now these are both very good. But I have been for no reason going on this imp train and this is kind of one of the payoff cards. So I'll take that. I'm actually thinking drawing is more valuable than raw energy or space at this point. Let's see. I'd really like to get more imps. But I can't really do that. Let's go this way. The pyre health usually doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a fun combo. I take this to give make something way stronger at the cost of it uh, consuming itself. Interestingly, I can throw this on Sting has this weird special buff so that every time I play it I just get another copy of Sting that does 25 damage. So instead of flooding my deck with this, I get one that, one that does 25 damage. But something I'd much prefer to do is I can put this on basically any spell. I think it's actually best on... Uh, one of these torches. And then I take this and I make it so I it doesn't consume it. 
The other question is, do I want to just put that on the tome? So that I can give multiple units quick, so I can start uh, eliminating threats before they get a chance to attack. Nah, cause I only have a few units who want to go quick. Oh, that's not true, all my units want to go quick. In that case, let's go. I'm gonna refresh this. Throw some raw power on this thing if I'm gonna be recycling it into my deck. Freeze stone. I actually think I'll put this on important work. But it basically, all it does is it makes it so I can, I don't know, reduce the cost of a 3 cost spell to 2. But all the freeze stone does is it gives you the opportunity to uh, save the card till later to use. And you're gonna give me this option again? Let my guy attack twice! I'll take the plus 42 if he kills a dude. Gonna feel really bad when one enemy attacks in an AoE and he dies, but... Like these guys. These guys attack in an AoE. They also reduce your ember, which is a real dick move. Got the slay proc. But yeah, because of that, I only have one ember to do to use this turn. So this guy up here. Oh, also, I forgot to mention. Uh, or I forgot to... I just forgot. Because of this, these guys gain their uh, missing HP twice. So they actually have a plus 120 missing HP when I spawn them. This guy here makes it so I kill both of them. I have quite enough space to do that. Oh, well, this doesn't do anything, but. Those loot goblins, I think, are the main way of getting gold in the run. Well, first of all, let's pop one of those. I actually think I want to import and work this guy. So that I can replace him with my Molting Ip that actually does damage. I also have this Pyre Chomper for a ton of uh, energy gain, but I don't need it right now. I want to regen him so he doesn't accidentally die like that. Like, so embarrassingly happened last time. Oof, that's... that's 200 attack. And I have no mana. Next turn, I'm gonna have only one. I really don't like the fact that certain enemies can just steal my mana. Specifically, these guys. As far as I've found, the main way to get rid of them is just to, uh. Okay. This time it doesn't matter because I can just pop this down for as much energy as I want. But as far as I found, the main way to deal with these guys is you get an effect that reduces their attack, and if their attack is zero, they can't attack. So let's cast a wake on this guy. Hit that for no reason, it doesn't actually do me any good. There's not actually any benefit to healing this guy, because I don't think these guys are going to spawn with the boss. Use it or lose it. Oh, 
want better late than never on that. Oh no, that was objectively bad. I'm a dumb. I am a dumb. I don't think it matters though. This boss's gimmick is that he has a lot of health and he has uh, an effect where he gains health, uh, attack every time you damage him. But I had so much burst damage. I think I might take, uh, oh, the, another Pyre Chomper, so I gotta take it. I'll take the draw effect. If I draw into another, if I draw into a Pyre Chomper, it basically means that I have as much mana as I want. I don't usually have the space to use two of these guys anyway, so I don't think I want to duplicate them. I might want to duplicate Immolate, or Impolate. Or even my Molting Imp at this rate. I think I'll uh, du duplicate this, it makes my Impolate do more damage as the final boss. Let's see what I can get. Well, these do nothing for me. This is the only one that does anything at all, and it's not that good. This could be really good if I had an X cost. I think I take this just because it effectively makes all my little torches a bit better. Do I actually have anything that cares about double stack? Yeah, I do. I have these. Double stack's effect is that it doubles the uh, it doubles the effects of things that you usually can't increase. Like if I put power on these, it just restore increases how much health it gives. It doesn't increase the regen. But if I put double stack on this, it now gives regen eight. <laughs> Let's reduce its cost while we're at it. That's always one of the options, no matter what you do. Let's uh, make Impolate cost zero. That way I always have the opportunity to use it if I draw it. And I don't think there's anything that I can get the much value out of making stronger but disappears. Yeah, so this guy has the effect where basically he puts some negative things in my deck and wherever he goes, he spawns an enemy. In addition, the first spell I play every turn is consumed. Thankfully, I drew the boys. So like I, right now, I want to use one of these because otherwise I'd lose one of my more powerful spells. But that was a pretty strong first turn. Throw this guy up here. Fledging him, gets rid of that guy. Or, what is he called? A mold molding it. And, in this fight, I don't think it's, that matters that much to use those. If the boss gets to my core, my core is probably dead. But I'm liking my chances here. If I use this, I can deal damage to the boss. And it's not like I'm having any issues down here dealing with enemies. I think I'm gonna save the Pyro Chomper, not gonna play him here because I don't actually gain that much from doing so. 
Oh shit, did I just bur uh, exhaust a card because I wasn't paying attention? I exhausted my sting. Yep. Ironically, I think this is worse than these are. No, that, that's, that, that would be stupid. But let's give him the power to kill things before they even get started. Throw down a, this. Some more healing. There's an actual threat that I just run out of stuff to do. And can't deal with the boss. Uh, this is actually a really good card to consume because it's not particularly good. Pop him down here. Actually getting 50 damage on the boss. Definitely want to put an awake on him. I don't think the boss has any way of killing my back row guy here, so not much point in buffing him. Uh, let's save that to burn on a turn when I'm going to consume a card anyways. That does work, by the way. If you use a card that's going to consume itself, but it's the first one in the turn, this effect doesn't apply. I save nothing by using these torches. Oh no, one damage to my core. Higher, whatever. Like the right right now. I can use that, then Impolate to deal 78 damage to the boss. Uh, I'm never gonna need these Pyre Chompers, probably, but just in case. I'll save it just in case I get a turn where I draw multiple uh, Awakens, or Awakes. I think next turn is the turn where I uh, have to fight the boss. Oh, it doesn't matter if it consumes because it makes copies of itself. That's so good in this fight. Oh, I only need a little bit more power to actually... Uh, Kill these guys. That turn, uh, ironically, using my using that quick actually made me do less damage. But it's going to be a lot better on this turn. So I'll eat that to throw. Regen 19 on this dude. These guys probably make it to my core if I don't kill the boss here. I kill the boss here, so it doesn't matter. Another slave proc. That feels good. 408 attack. God damn. Well, that's what winning this game looks like, if you were wondering. Just stack heal. Everything works. We get this cool little cutscene here where we relight the fires of hell. 
from what I understand, the story of this is basically you're riding a train full of demons into hell to try and reclaim hell from angels. There's going to be some cards I unlock, but there's not anything more th that interesting to watch after this, so I'll stop it here. Thanks for watching.